professionals it is lou ashley and we have a wonderful guest with us el shaddai we are going to get into everything but as per usual moment of gratitude let's get into it okay i'll start <laughs> you want to start? go ahead and do it yeah i am grateful for today let's talk hey. about it today it 80 degree weather I want to say in New York City can we talk about that and when it gets warm out here in the city we don't know how to act we are so excited honestly <laughs> we're just so excited for that little dose of summer everybody was outside right even if you had nothing to do you were outside <laughs> so I just love the energy of New York I just love the energy of summer in New York, and I'm excited for the energy to come these next few months. It's a lot of things happening, so I'm excited for it. I'm grateful for that. Yes. Kind of to like piggyback off your thing, because honestly, for New Yorkers, if you give us like a good 60, even a nice 55, because there's 50s can go either way. It can be a nice one or, and 80 is like icing on the cake. Okay, so I am grateful. Like, it feels nice. You feel that energy and the sun is out. Yeah. I am grateful that, you know, we're literally here pulling out our calendars. Like, okay, where can I fit this in? Where can I fit this in? What can I do? I am thankful to be able to have things to do yes. with people I like to do them with. You know what I mean? And during my birthday in February, it's kind of like I, like, rediscovered my city and my love for her. So I'm kind of excited to see what the summer brings. Like a Brooklyn summer ain't nothing like it. We're going to have a whole lit list. Like we said before, it's going to be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Love yeah. That. Kind of in the same theme as you guys. But first I would say, you know, it was this past Sunday was Resurrection Sunday. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful for having unconditional love in my life. And also grateful for the weather too, because here in Dallas it's like seventy. So okay. And grateful for my community, my brother, my cousins, and friends. We're gonna take advantage of the weather this weekend, and we're gonna go on some outdoor adventures. So yeah, I'm grateful for all three of those things. <laughs> oh yeah, I love it. Ashley's definitely an outdoors girl. Oh yeah, I'm all about outdoors hiking i'm i'm all about it <laughs> i'm excited <laughs> for it mm -hmm, if i don't mm -hmm. go outdoors i'll like catch myself having an attitude and i'm like oh it's because i haven't been outside mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I just you are not to be blamed nature is necessary <laughs> just the sun beaming on my face is just literally uh yes i'm <laughs> happy to hear that great things are happening for you. But as we get into our topic, I mean, we'll see if it's, you know, good, bad, however you take it. We're going to talk about when divorce happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is our lovely guest, El Shaddai. You want to just get right into it? Like gloves off, we just going to get into it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to give a quick background of yourself and let the people know yeah. who you are? Yeah. I think you guys found me because I made a TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny because I like once I went through like my separation and divorce, I took like a hiatus from like television, like anything social media. Like I was a hot mess. So I was like, OK, let me just feed myself. Um, I was just in no place to be doing anything. So then when I hopped back on social media, I was like, oh, TikTok. I've never been on TikTok. Let me make some TikTok videos. And honestly surprised by thinking like, oh, this would be something crazy to post because this doesn't happen to anyone. And then shocked to find that people were messaging me like, oh, yeah, my ex-husband divorced me over a text or one day I came home and things were gone or, you know, vice story after story and I was like oh my god this is not like an anomaly which I thought it was so yeah so I guess that's how you guys ended up yeah I was like oh my page <laughs> and I was like wow and I want to discuss it because I feel like this happens like you're saying 
quite a bit and we don't really discuss it how it happens at all at all yeah interesting I had a friend introduce me to her friend same thing happened and uh, this is when I realized I was like okay because it was something that like was it's really embarrassing to say that I guess let me kind of backtrack I'm in my marriage we were married for two and a half years at that point a year before we officially separated we did separate for like a year before that for like a week and it was kind of his thing where he was like hey I want a divorce and and by the way, when we first got married, we went we went through the whole premarital counseling thing. We Ooh. waited. We did all all the right things, right? Quote unquote. Right. And one of the things, ironically, we said is like, oh, we'd never throw like we called it the D word, like the divorce word around. And like he would say it pretty casually. And when he dropped it the first time, like a year ago or not the first time. But it's seriously where he's like, hey, I want a divorce. I'm going through this. And we separated for a week. We ended up getting back together. And then a year later, I'm in this position where we're going through marital counseling because it wasn't like the easiest thing. We're about five days away from closing on a property that took us six months to close on because it was we're going through loopholes. I was working like three two and a half, three and a half jobs at the time because we were trying to save all this money to purchase this property. We have a conversation. I go to work because I work overnight. I come home and at that time, because we were trying to save money and make it look good for the, the loan, our schedules were so different. So I come home, I go to sleep. And when I wake up at noon, I see a text message that says, I'm not closing on the property and I want a divorce. It's official. I'm like freaking out, but I'm like, okay, this has happened a year ago. So like, maybe he's just upset about something. Mm -hmm. It is stressful. Like we've been getting in arguments about this property and like nothing to me that seemed like that was unusual or not workable. Cause it wasn't anything dramatic. Like where someone cheated on someone, it was just like mm -hmm. all of this stress. And because of his job too, he was really stressed and just like normal conflicts that I thought like every married couple, every married couple went through. So I try to call him and reach him and I'm not getting him. And I check my bank account and like half of our money is removed. And that's when I knew, okay, this is serious because this is the, the money that we were supposed to put down on the down payment. And now I'm like crying and freaking out because I'm like, okay, what do I tell my real estate agent? Because we're supposed to close on this property in five days. And the people that we were purchasing the land from had waited already five months at that point because we were going through a veterans land board and they just made it so difficult for us and they extended the closing date four or five times mm -hmm. for me to be like hey uh by the way mm -hmm. and long story short I reached out to his friends and I realized oh no he's he's serious this is not like this is not happening I end up staying at my mom's for a little bit and I'm like a hot mess. I haven't eaten. I've like lost 10 pounds in two weeks. It was just like the craziest, never in my life thought I would go through here because when I was on my, I always look back to the day that I made vows and I always knew I was like, okay, I was aware of, because we, we did marital counseling through one church for six weeks, like a boot camp thing. And then with our pastor for like more than a year. And I always knew I said to myself, I know my marriage will last forever because I'm willing to go through thick or thin. And I just knew myself like that I would fight for my marriage, but I never took account. Like if the other person <laughs> wants to go, there's nothing you can do to stop it. So yeah, that's kind of the, yeah, the, the general gist of like how the divorce happened. Did you feel like you were ready before marriage to be married? Yeah, I did. I felt like I had so many conversations with different married folks. We had like a mentor, like married couple who've been married for some time, had kids. Even through premarital counseling, I remember I was the one that brought it up the first time we did our premarital counseling because um, we started talking about engagement and I was like, okay, this is something that like, I feel like it's coming. I think even before we get engaged, let's just have serious, like be forced to answer these questions. And I feel like the premarital counseling did a good job of bringing up topics of like finances and 
family and what do you do when your parents get old? Like we touched every serious topic and just the way that 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 counseling was set up, they had other people who had gone through like, you know, cheating or whatever, sharing their testimonies of how they got through their marriage. So we had these like very open and real conversations. And I guess like where everything fell short was for him, what he kind of, I didn't get like any answer from him. It, it, it was like very much so like he wasn't happy and that's it kind of thing. Like there wasn't any closure, but from what I got was like not bringing up expectations because when people keep it inside and you're like, kind of what I got from his friends and family was like, someone's like, you're taking a, t- you're, you're part of this test, but you don't know you're taking a test. Mm. And so like, they're like, fail, fail, fail. And then at the end you get served divorce papers. So it was like all of these things that were gaining up against me that I didn't know, like these expectations and even the expectations that he did bring up, like I was working towards. So it was just like very either unrealistic expectations or expectations that were never brought up to me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and, uh-huh. go ahead, because and I was going to say to kind of give you a backstory. When we were first dating, one of he was a police officer, and one of the issues was that mm. it was um, in 2016, and I don't remember. There was a lot of protests in Dallas at the time, mm. and we had this. Con- we got we got in an argument about that, and it was really serious. We ended up break like we. He broke up with me. It was like a week where we didn't talk. And then we ended up having a conversation and reconciling. But I realized that was like one of the points of contention was his career and how he felt about it. And and at one point he did bring it up in our marriage where he didn't feel, me, feel comfortable with me posting anything on social media. And to me at the time, I felt like that's fair because he felt like I was choosing sides. And, and I, I could see how that looks like online or whatever. So I refrain from posting but later on found out like oh there was this six seven year grudge that you were holding from a conversation we had in 2016 so it was like I'd already lost the battle that I didn't know I was in (laughs) right so as much as you prepared and as much as you know in your mind your marriage was going a certain way that clearly you were not aware of when it finally happened like what were your initial thoughts and emotions like this is my it's over of course heartbreak yeah because you just want something uh like my real like my sense of reality was not there because I'm like okay trying to like backtrack and figure out and even calling our counselor but my counselor was like you know said what he had to say to our marriage counselor where it was like, hey, this person wasn't like doing the effort to even make steps while we were in counseling. So there, there's not much you can do. Like you tried your best and you know your efforts, but like, it was just like, no, 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 it's not making sense. And then one, just embarrassment because I'm like, oh my God, two and a half years, like all the people, I'm just thinking of everyone who was at my wedding, my community. I'm like, how do I even tell these people? Like, and in the manner that it happened, I was just embarrassed. Like, what What do I tell these people? Like, you know, to be rejected is already like hurtful and embarrassing, but to be rejected by your husband and to try to explain that. And by the way, I told like really close, uh, my parents knew, of course, and like my brother, my close family and very close friends, maybe like two or three friends. But I, people didn't know for maybe a year. I Like I didn't go to church because like even having that all those questions uh, yeah all of those questions I just was not prepared to answer mm-hmm. like and I was already dealing with myself and by the way I was still in a place where I felt like okay you know what maybe God is doing something here and I'm just gonna pray for him and I'm gonna like I had friends and family like pray and fast for him and and for my marriage so I was in a place where I was like okay this is what it looks like now but like I've heard stories of reconciliation and you know and then like he's asking me for my new address because we were living obviously in the same place and he'd canceled our um our uh, lease for our apartment so he's like hey we have to move out by this date and i was like okay this is 
So I stay with my parents and like even him trying to serve me, I avoided it for the longest mm-hmm. amount of time that I could because I was like, I cannot, I don't want to be divorced. Like, I don't want that. Like, I, I've, I've never pictured myself like being that divorced person or whatever, like connotation that I had associated with that. So I was still like holding out hope that there would be right. reconciliation. Yeah. Right. <laughs> But then w- once I realized, okay, this is like, it's been, I want to say like three or four weeks, we didn't talk or anything. I think it was at like week three that I ended up moving out and then I got a roommate and um, it kind of helped that my roommate, she didn't go through the similar thing, but she was going through a divorce at the same time. So it was like yeah. having someone that understood like, okay, we were able to give each other space, like you know, understand that like, hey, today I don't have it emotionally, energetically, spiritually, I don't have it to give. Um, so like just having that mutual understanding. So I ended up moving into my apartment and I went to see a therapist as soon as like, I realized, okay, this is not like, what do I do? I, I had two therapists at one point, actually. <laughs> oh. um, one, <laughs> one of my therapists, he was like, Saw me maybe three times because I thought I was like the most broken person. I'm like, why would someone leave? Like, I need to fix myself. So I was in the place where I thought it was about me. And I was like, okay, what? And I'm like explaining, you know, of course, more details to the therapist. And he's just like, no, 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 no. Stop right here. There's nothing wrong with you. Like, and then even the fact that I was grieving, he's like, this is normal, but you're still working. You're planning on going to school. Like, you don't need to see me anywhere. He's like, I'm not going to diagnose you with anything. Like I can keep taking your money, but he was just like, basically like a therapist breaking up with someone. And then at that same time, towards the end of our sessions, I went to see a therapist who was like a black woman. Cause I felt like, okay, maybe she'll relate more. And that did feel more comfortable. But even after having so many sessions with her, she's like, okay, just like helping me reframe my mind and not feel shame around it or blame myself or any of those things and like being at peace with the fact that like hey sometimes people don't get closure like that just doesn't happen and that was really encouraging and then I was like okay I need to start working on my own like myself my peace of mind spiritually mentally emotionally all of the things I hear you do you feel like during that time you had a lot of support from your friends and family as well. Like what were other ways you coped during that time? Yeah. I will, I will say this, like when people ask me, I always say it's like God community and therapy that like kind of got me through that time. But I will say when I ended up moving into my own space, I kind of set a boundary with everyone because Everybody has an opinion on how you should handle a thing, especially when I was going through my divorce. Like, you know, your friends and family, they're hurt for you. So a lot of people are like, he can't get away with this. Like, you have the right to 50% of this and that. Mm -hmm. And even speaking to a lawyer, they told me that. And I had my mindset of like, okay, holding him accountable. Like, I'm going to hold him accountable. Like, you can't just do this. And I've done A, B, C, and D, you know, for him in my marriage. And so like, this is due, due to me. But during that time, I was like, I call it my prayer closet. Like I'd be in my closet and I would journal every day and I would just like be talking to God. And I'm like, really just trying to get some kind of peace because anytime I was going to work, I was crying on my way to work, crying on my bed, mm-hmm. crying back home. Like this was like a good six months crying every single day. It was just heartbreak, mm-hmm. just like a hot mess. Well, I was in my closet one day and I, I don't, it wasn't like a vocal voice that like, was like, don't do, you know, do this. But I was sitting in my closet one day and I'm like going through my normal devotional and I came across like a a verse, a a portion of scripture in the Old Testament where David has a chance to get at Saul. And Saul is like, I, I can't remember, I think he was using the bathroom or something. He was like basically exposed and it was in a part of like where he was vulnerable and everyone was telling him like his the uh, his uh military people and his first guy in command are telling him like hey this is your chance to get him back like he's done all this to you and this is your final chance mm-hmm. and and david was like no like 
he had every right to because this man has tried to kill him multiple times, but he decided to like extend grace. And for whatever reason, I was like really convicted by that. And I I just thought like, no, God, this is not fair. No, 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 no. I'm going to make mm-hmm. sure like the, the court of law in Texas, I've already spoke to the judge and the lawyers and they say that this is my right. Essentially, I like did one of those prayers. Where I'm like, like I come across two other scriptures that are something similar like that. And I kind of get the gist of it. And I'm like, okay, if you want me, <laughs> if you want me to extend this man grace, if you want me to extend him grace, you're going to have to send some kind of sign. My phone rings right after that. Mm-hmm. It is like so crazy. I, I answer it and it's my mom's best friend. And she's like, hey, Elshu, you know, I didn't, when I saw you, I didn't feel comfortable to tell you this then. And she's like, and basically like, I'm so sorry if I'm like overstepping my bounds, but you know, her junior mom talking and I don't think, I don't think you should take any money from him. Like, she's like, it's just going to be cursed. And you don't want that. Like, just start off fresh. Don't start off with it. Don't be bitter. Don't, you know, and I'm praying for you and I start crying and I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you for being obedient to the voice of God and Mm. hearing that because. I was just right now, I, and I explained the same thing I'm telling you guys to her. And it was just like little things like that where I was like, felt like I was in the wrong place sometimes. And I just felt so confused and lost. But like, there was just these little confirmations along the way. It's crazy because we end up going through the divorce. And again, I hold out as long as I can, but finally like the day has come and I'm like praying and I finally feel, feel a piece about it. We do like our virtual court or whatever. I sign the papers and it is crazy because I was working a job that I did not want to work at the time. I was going through this like tech boot camp and I ended up getting a job that paid more than double what I was paying, getting paid at my current job. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow. It was like, as soon as I got divorced, like everything just started lining up. And it was so crazy because the whole time I thought I needed this other person, it was like my value was attached to my marriage or my value was attached to him. And the moment that he said I didn't have value, essentially like through a text, I believed it. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the day that I got divorced and it felt like it was finally no strings attached, everything just started to like fall into place. And I was like, okay, like, and I just felt like a peace. And also the whole time, like God's like, first of all, like, even when you were in marriage, he wasn't the one providing and the what he wasn't the one covering you. It was me the whole time. Mm. And so when I finally got out of it, it's just like, I can't explain to you guys blessing after blessing, the property. I didn't know how to tell my agent this, but I call him and I say, Hey, I don't know how to explain this to you. But I want to get into the details of it. Joseph's not showing up to the to the signing table. Okay. And he's like, okay. And I was like, I don't know if they're going to be willing to wait another month. Because at that point, like I told y'all, it was already five months. Long story short, they were like, we, we can't do it. Like that, they basically gave us our time and they said no. They end up calling back like a week later and they were like, we'll, we'll give her, we'll give her a month. So my parents helped me co-sign. We get a bank and et cetera, et cetera. The day before the closing date, the new official closing date, my agent tries to reach me. I miss his call or whatever. And my mom calls me right after. And she's like crying. And she's like, oh my God, like this was always meant for you. It was always meant for you. And I'm like, what? And she's like, the, and by, mind you, the people have no idea what is going on in my life. But she's like, the, the owners called and they said they felt led to cover all the cost. So up until that point, like I told y'all, because of the five months that had gone by, I'd spent like $9,000 on the property doing every single thing that the veterans land board was telling me. And they covered that cost. And they removed 10,000 from the price of the property. And it was just like little things like that, that were encouragement, like, okay, you're not forgotten. You're not like, God is so he, he might've left you, but like, I'm still here. I'm still covering you. You're still walking in your purpose. So that was, it was little things like that. Even though I was crying every day, because trust me, I was still a hot mess. I would be like so excited and happy and close. And then it's like going back to being sad. But it was like, there was all these like little, you know, pieces of glimmer of light and just, you know, you'll just have random people coming down the street or whatever it is. It's just like little, any encouragement I can hold onto during that time, I was just like grasping whatever I could. 
Let me tell you, we love a good confirmation when things just align. Like it just aligned in a way that I did not even expect this kind of testimony, but I'm here for it and I love it. And it is, it is just, it just goes to show. Like now I, your, your moment of gratitude just makes all the more sense. Like it just. Yeah, that is obviously a huge lesson, right? Being obedient and listening and just following that, even though the flesh might be saying one thing, you know what I mean? And it would feel good and you would, no one would fault you for doing all of that. Exactly. You know what I mean? But you, you stay steadfast and I love that for you. And and your the fruits are, you know, they're coming out, but what else do you feel like, you know, that, even with all the tools that you had and all that you, you know, learned in a mass, how have you feel like that? What did you learn from like, that you didn't know maybe at the beginning of your marriage that like you, you know, now. Yes. Okay. I'm going to say, say this for sure. I feel like as women and maybe even, and not just generalizing, I'll say for me at least. Okay. As you're getting older, and then especially in Texas, like people get married young. Mm -hmm. I was 27 when I got married. I'm 31 now. So we were together 27, 28, 29. So I felt like that was like I waited a while because we were dating for three years before we even got married. And I want to say even maybe even the whole red pill community thing where it's like, oh, like what I hear a lot is like for women to just like, you're not going to find the perfect guy. So just settle for what you what you can get, you know, if he's just a good guy. And I would have believed that kind of like, I guess, thing before. For me, I think what I what I learned is one, just like being really honest with what I want, because at the end of the day, like, you know, we know what we're looking for in a partner, despite like if this person's a an overall good person. I think for my ex partner, he seemed to like check off like maybe not my specific boxes, but like what everyone that I knew, like maybe like my church community, my parents would love him. Like my kid, I know he's a good guy and he's just- He looks good on paper. He looks good on paper. There you go. But if I'm being honest, now looking back, before we got married, if I'm being 100% honest, and and I was talking to my roommate about this recently and one of my close friends who was like shocked, it's like, I think if I'm being honest, deep deep down inside i feel like our intuition our gut whatever you want to call it maybe holy spirit whatever you want to call it for women there's like this thing where when it tells you something to just listen because i had like an intuition of maybe this isn't the right person and i don't think that there's just like one person i don't believe in like one soul made out of the six billion or seven billion people on earth but i i wish i would have been like more truthful to myself and knowing what i wanted because even talking to my cousin recently she's like y'all are completely opposites and i get it like opposites attract but we were opposite in every aspect and i think i also fantasized maybe that's not the right word but rationalized what like sacrifice look like like i thought that it's okay to keep sacrificing Ooh. like sacrifice is love and so mm-hmm. i would mm-hmm. sacrifice mm-hmm. and sacrifice and sacrifice and i idolized what that looked like where it's like okay there are some things where you sacrifice right but like all of yourself to every you know to every end that's not fair like at the end of the day I get it like even as a believer it's like yeah you die to yourself but at the end of the day like this is your life partner for the rest of your life do you want to be miserable you know there is a part where it's like you have to take some things into consideration and I just didn't I told myself even before I married him I was like you know what no Jesus died for me on the- I'm not Jesus I'm not dying on a cross for someone <laughs> no <laughs> I like somehow rationalized that Jesus had done this and that like I had to go like it's okay if I marry this person and even when they don't love me but like you you can have like you get to have a marriage that you enjoy and I'm still kind of working through that now even like exploring you know if that's like past traumas what that looks like where I feel like I have to suffer for love like for me Mm. to be 
worthy of love, I have to like sacrifice endlessly or suffer in order to, you know, somehow please that person. But yeah, that's one thing, a couple of things that for sure, I guess, exposed itself. And one other thing too, I will say, because I, I recently went on a not recently, like maybe a couple months ago, went on a few dates with some guys. I'm now, when a man tells me something, I'm believing it. Mm. I'm not like filtering it and like, oh, this is, I'm believing exactly what you say. There was a guy that we were sitting at dinner and he's like, I feel like you're too good for me. Thank you, sir. Thank you for telling me that now. Bye. (laughs) Because I feel like people in inadvertently t- like share these things about themselves and i remember my ex would say things like this when we were dating and it's like Whoa. things later get exposed but it's like when a guy is telling you something that you just believe him because he knows himself more than i do so if you're telling me you think i am too good for you that's not a compliment to me that is a warning sign telling me there's like some uncovered things or undiscovered things that i don't know and i don't want to find out when it's too late because so it will I- show itself it will. It does eventually. So I am believe whatever they tell me, I'm not like, I know as a woman, sometimes it's like, oh, he didn't. No, no, no. I'm taking you at your word. <laughs> <laughs> I believe that. How, but how long has it been for you since you've been divorced? Officially, divor- we got officially like signed the paperwork May of 2022. Mm-hmm. But I did not see him like as in when he sent me the text and we got separated was like May, the end of May, we'll say June 1st of 2021. So it's mm-hmm. been like a year and a half, two years almost. Wow. So yeah, it's still so fresh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but I promise you, like, it is just so crazy. Because when I look at at the woman who is going through that, even when I'm reading my journal during that time, I'm like, oh my God, you didn't know, like you're gonna come to this place, you know? I I just can't explain like how blessed I am. And even like going through that experience, I feel like sometimes, I don't know if someone's going through this where you're like going through any kind of hardship. For me, it was divorce. And I felt like my ministry was gonna be like, oh, ministering to married people. And then in a sense, I do to this day. into people I've prayed over couples I've prayed for women who've gone through what I've gone through and in a weird way like I said through TikTok women have messaged me and like ministered through messages and like hey trust me like feel all the feelings now surround yourself with a great community like go to the truth of like God saying your love that he formed you in your mother's womb before anyone knew you and like all those things like, yes, maybe this man has rejected you, but there's a, there's a God that hasn't rejected you and he Ever. loves you. And he has a purpose and a plan for you. And it's funny because maybe he didn't see the guy that you were with, like what life was going to look like. And he didn't believe in that. And maybe that's a good thing that he's removed himself because you don't want people like that in your corner, you know, but yeah. It's just, I'm, yeah, I'm just so grateful. And and it's like two different people. If you ask anyone, like people were concerned about me. It looked like Mm -hmm. I was like sick. I was like so thin and skinny and worn out and just beat up. But now looking back, I'm, I'm grateful to even have gone through that. There's a verse, I think it's second Corinthians 4, 17, 16 through 18, But essentially, it says something along the lines of like, even though we're going through these things, like, for me, it was my divorce, we come out on the other side, I'm just paraphrasing, it's not the verse, but we basically come out on the other side, the thing that we're going through is temporary, but the thing that it produces in us is Mm. eternal. So that trauma, that pain lasted a year for me. And that was a long year for me. But the things that it produced humility, trust in myself and God, faithfulness, like a renewed belief in myself, my eyes opening to like the community that I have around me, my relationship with my father being reconciled because me and my dad, we weren't so close, but during this time, and he wasn't a believer at the time that like growing up, I didn't grow up in a believing house would call me, pray over me, tell me the purposes and plans mm-hmm. that God had. Like, I thought my marriage was going to be reconciled, but so many other things, other parts of my life was reconciled. Even my relationship with my mom and seeing like, you know, she would come like pick me up at 10 p.m. and we'd go to the drive through at Burger King and just sit and eat and talk. And like, just seeing like family come together and friends. And it's like, 
yeah, that pain was temporary, but everything that it produced, that's eternal. That's something that I get to take with me after the fact, you know? Ooh. I'm grateful. Ooh. It sounds like you really came out winning in the end. I am so happy for you because sometimes you want to think like, even if you were feeling all the things because you said you were so devoted and you so like, maybe if he didn't end it, you might still be in it. And so those are like those like exactly. blessings that like exactly. now you're able to see and appreciate. Because even like sometimes when people are preaching to you, you want to be like, I don't want to hear this right now because I'm in my feelings. It might be true and you might know it to be true. But when you can hear those things and like take it in, you know that you are coming out on the other side. Literally. I remember like my dad, he would like just encourage me all the time. And like you said, sometimes you don't want to hear these things, but at least like for anybody who maybe like you have a friend going through a hard time or a family member. Those seeds were planted. I couldn't really like, because I was like so involved in my herd and, you know, but all those seeds were still being planted. They just like bloomed in, in another time. But like yeah. the people around me were watering me and, you know, making sure that like I was fed and taken care of, even though they knew like, okay, maybe she's not listening to me because I was in a place where I was delusional and whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm I'm grateful for those. And I like, and it's so funny because I remember saying to my, one of my therapists, I'm like, because she was saying, oh, you know, when you come out on the other side, you'll be grateful. And I remember telling her, I was like, I don't know why people say that. I don't ever see myself being grateful for this. <laughs> grateful <laughs> for this. <laughs> right. But honestly, like I am, and I can say, you know, I'm glad the way that it happened. And like, it's made me so much of a stronger person. And a more well-rounded person and a more understanding person like you know I used to have this vision of marriage and would like ju judge people who were divorced and now just being humbled by that and like seeing through the lens of like you just don't know what's going on in people's marriages you know maybe you're their best friend and you think they're telling you everything but you just at the end of the day those two people know what's going on so yeah that was like such a humbling and made me like like I said non-judgmental stronger more like leaning and trusting in God and my path and my myself all those things so our last question mm -hmm. are you open to, we hear that you're been on a few dates here and there so are you open to marriage again yes I am actually when I was going on dates that ended very quickly <laughs> 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 because I was like I just want to see like am I open to like can my heart you know accept this again and like my awkward I don't know what this looks like but yeah I am I wouldn't say right now immediately like I'm kind of I'm like I, I'm 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 enjoying my singleness mm -hmm. I think I have like one of my best friends is like it's like you've got a, a second lease at life because I'm doing everything I've ever wanted to do I'm doing now and you're still young, girl. You still got it. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. No, literally. So I'm like, I have time. I have time. So yeah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I feel like now more so I want to be like walking in my purpose and finding my person on that path and not mm -hmm. like searching and looking or I, I saw like some quote on Instagram that was like, you should be so lost in Find in you. the presence yeah. of God that a man has to find him in order in or, a man has to search for him in order to find you yeah um and that is just like so true for me now like I, I I'm not like out there looking for it but just on my on my path and if he's on the same path then we'll mm. you know find each other but for sure I'm open tell the people where they can find Love you yeah. on Instagram or TikTok <laughs> I am on TikTok and Instagram at El Shaddai Arredo. That's E-L-S-H-A-D-A-Y-A-R-E-D-O. And yeah, it can, the people, like, especially if people are women, men, whoever are going through this right now, feel free to DM me. I've been, me and my roommate, we pray for married couples all the time. And, and even women who are going through divorces. Uh, so yeah, for sure. Anytime. Yes. Yeah. yeah, she is clearly. I would, I would love to walk with people on that journey. Yes. 
Thank you for yes. joining us. Yes, I love it. This love it. evening, today, you. for everyone mm-hmm. who's listening, I hope you guys yes. um, took some points away from it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, tell us your thoughts, tell us if you've experienced divorce and how that was for you. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. till next time, everyone. Bye.